Hello everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable weekend. Uh, I'm wishing you the best. Uh, enjoy, love on those who love on you. Take care of yourself. Uh, I'm not going to be long. Um, here to run some errands, get my day started. First and foremost, um, don't forget we're still in the middle of a fundraiser. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in a minute. If you haven't gotten book number 25, uh, The War on Black Wealth, uh, Breaking the Code, definitely get that. Uh, it's dropping uh, this week. Uh, it's dropping. So get that. Uh, it's a full uh, addressing of the issue from all the things that we have had to fight against to the very mechanisms that we have at our disposal now to combat it and close the racial uh, wealth gap. And so you definitely want to explore what's in this book. Uh, the link is in the description box. Now, for those of you who have helped and contributed uh, to the fundraiser that we've been pushing uh, for some time, but we we tried to do a super push this week. Uh, the goal was to raise $5,000. We didn't come close, but for those of you who helped, uh, your support was and is tremendously appreciated. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, but we're not quitting. We're not going to give up. We are still pushing. Uh, a couple of days ago, I shared, shared with you some pretty alarming statistics surrounding young black males. Well, those young black males eventually become full-grown black men. And with those statistics, they should, it should be extremely alarming. And, and, con and you should be concerned about the future, not of just black males, but of the black community. Why? Because black males, black men play a tremendous role in the stabilization of the black community, in the advancement of the black community, in the mechanisms of building wealth in the black community, in a patriarchal society. So it's immensely important to understand the things that these young boys are working against as young boys. Uh, you've heard me say this before uh, in quoting uh, Frederick Douglass, that it's, e it's much easier to build strong children than it is to uh, fix or heal broken men. And we need to understand that that's one of the things we need to be focusing on is building strong children. The way that we do that is through proper uh, development, proper socialization, uh, proper self-awareness, self-identity, self-esteem, self-confidence. Those are the things, those are the building blocks. Uh, we're struggling in that area mightily. We are trusting a system that is literally designed to destroy them, to build them, and we are seeing the consequences. And we are going to have to do more than just sit up and go, oh my God, shaking my head, how horrible, that's sad, they're evil. Well, nobody, very few people, I can't say no one's born evil because uh, psychopaths, from what we know, are born psychopathic. Um, so there's darkness, but they are less than 1% of the population. So we can say with some certainty that it's not likely that this is coming from a whole group of psychopaths or that blacks are more likely to be psychopathic because actually uh, the statistics don't support that at all. Won't get into it, but here's what I can tell you. The environment in which a child raises is rare, has an immense influence on them. The presence of men around them to model manhood effectively and properly is immensely important. A great deal of what a young boy is going to develop and learn about being a man isn't what's told to them, it's what they see. It's what they observe. And when you have 1.5 million men that are absent in the community, 1 million plus of that in prison, that's not what we need them to see. And then when you understand that one of the most powerful mechanisms there is, media and music, is feeding them uh, everything that is diametrically opposed to them becoming strong, independent-minded, 
uh, critical thinkers that are going to be uh, needed in the future to come up with solutions, to lay the path, to be the force of protection and insulation of the communities and the homes that they are a part of. We have failed. And 20 years ago, I, over 20 years ago, I began the process of researching African-American adolescent young adult male violence. Uh, crossed paths with Dr. Joy DeGroove, Dr. Howard Stevenson out of the University of Pennsylvania, and a couple of others, and found that there were elements within the influencers of this violence, poverty, urban uh, hassle, uh, witnessing violence, but there were there were there were elements within it that could be manipulated, could be controlled, could be shifted and changed. One was, and the most powerful was, proper racial socialization into black manhood. And that's when I decided we needed a universal rite of passage. Thus, black men lead. Uh, my goal is still to make it a universal rite of passage to where it is the standard in every city and town in the United States that this is what black manhood is and this is how we get here. Create a rite of passage so that they can be celebrated as they move and transition into this process of becoming a man. It is extremely important. It is seen in all other areas. All of the other successful groups you are seeing, their sons have something that they are being taught and trained that embodies the culture that embodies the value system of the people, that embodied, embodies the heritage and the history, and we don't have that. We're expecting them to figure this thing out on their own. We're expecting a system that won't even admit to what went on in slavery to teach them who they are and where they truly come from and what they're capable of, which makes absolutely no sense because then that makes them capable of competing against their children. That's not going to happen. It's our responsibility. Obviously, the things that I want to do, I want to create a center here in Houston as a hub for the most incorrigible but most promising to be able to come down and live for a year and be taught and be trained. I want to travel to all the major and sub-major cities in America over the next 18 months and teach communities how to operate in this program, how to effectively socialize, how to make up for the gap in the absence of men, how to take strong men and attract them in and, and, and encourage them to be a part of this because we are going to have to be willing to parent kids that aren't ours. And that goes against so much of what I see in today's society. And I am at a point now where I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up because I see the program works. I know it works. The young boys I'm working with, the young men I'm working with, immense uh, progress. And the number of them coming to me is increasing. And I don't want to turn nobody away. I want to take everybody on. But you have to understand that there's a monumental uh, cost involved in being able to take on kids, especially kids who are coming from extreme poverty, especially kids who are going to need certain wraparound services because of their environment. Um, you know, I had to help a man uh, a few weeks ago, a 52 year old man with a 14 year old son. The son I'm very concerned about, but obviously there's a 52 year old man going through something and we had to help him with some situations uh, from housing to mental health, some other things, and make sure they were taken care of. Um, there aren't enough resources, and it's not just with my program, it's with programs that actually have meaning. Uh, everything that's getting funded looks good on the outside, but does nothing really. It's, it's all about putting on the show. We've seen this in so many different ways. We should know the game. We should know the, uh, the, pl the plan by now, the game plan by now. The things that really work don't get back. And there's a reason for that. It's not by accident. But what we have to do is we have to continue on. We have to push on. We have to trust uh, that we have what, what we need within the community. And we do. It's just that we haven't gotten focused enough, fixated enough, and committed enough to make it happen. I'm not going to back down. I'm not moving away. I thank the people who reached out and did what they have done uh, to 
try to get us going. And like I said, we, you know, fell extremely short, but we'll continue to push on. So I'm going to ask you again, if you believe in the work, if you know work needs to be done, first and foremost, donate. Second of all, challenge other people to do the same. Third of all, if there's someone you know who needs to get to me, and uh, that was somebody that, that did ask, how can they get their son involved? I sent the email address. I haven't heard from you. Uh, we're here. We're not going anywhere. We're going to push this thing. As long as I got breath in my body, I am pulling in young men who want to be mentors, who who I've mentored and now want to be mentor, mentors. I'm pulling them in. They're ready to go to work. They're ready to do things. But we are going to have to be willing to back this. This is so much bigger than me. I'm glad to be the person who... who uh, created Black Man Lead, but it needs to be a universal thing. It needs to belong to the community. And that's what I'm trying to get, trying to get it to where it belongs to the community. Because once we get it to that level, it'll start to support itself. It'll be out there. Everybody will see what's going on. Everybody starts to make it a community priority. And we get it there, but we have work to do. So again, I'm challenging you. If you believe in what I do, if you followed me, I've been out here doing this uh, for nearly 30 years in the community. Uh, but on social media, I've been here 12 years. I mean, yeah, 12 years. I've been in the community showing. If you go to our site, you will see tons and tons and tons of content, tons and tons and tons of work. Uh, I'm dropping book number 25. Uh, and I only count books that have more than 200 pages. So if you count things that are under 200 pages, man, I'm up there. And I have done this, my life, it's, it's a part of my life. Yes, I have businesses I run that takes care of me and my family. But I have been in this community thing for a while. And I will continue to fight, I will continue to be here. And I just want an opportunity to touch the lives of as many children, male and female, as possible. And I want to do everything I can to change the current state. And it's possible. Don't tell me it's not possible. There's no such thing as impossible. But it requires commitment. It requires sacrifice. It requ requires consistency. And that's where we're lacking. But I'm not backing off. I'm not giving up. So, again, I'm calling on you to join me. Uh, the link is going to be in the description box. Uh, if you want to give through Cash App, the Cash App handle is in the description box as well. On that note, I'm getting out of here and I'm moving on to the next uh, thing i got to do today. But I'll be back. You guys take care.